Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a matter of great joy for me to be with you all once again and share from God's word the Bible. We are studying from the book of Philippians. Philippians is a very small book in the New Testament part of the Bible. It is written by Apostle Paul to a small group of believers in Philippi. We are looking at the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, how it will be applied in our life and how when we allow ourselves to be applied in our life, how it transforms us and how that gospel will drive our life and different aspects, different spiritual aspects of our life. We are in second chapter of Philippians and in second chapter, the initial verses, we already learned about gospel driven unity and we also learned that this gospel driven unity can only grow in our life when we are humble people and when we are truly humble in our heart we will be helpful to other people and we will be looking into others interests more than our own interests and we will we will regard others and their needs and uh, uh, we will not be uh, having an inflated ego last study we just started in, uh, looking at few practical strategies by which we can cultivate humility and crucify pride. So today I would like to continue that uh, practical strategies whereby you can crucify pride and grow in humility and cultivate humility in your life. We already learned two points. First thing what we learned is that we should study the character of God. Character of God can be studied from the pages of the Bible. Who is this God? How great is this God? What are his great works? What are his great qualities? When you see God's grace, when you see God's mercy, his kindness, his long suffering, his awesomeness, his uh, omnipotence, his all sufficiency, and uh, he who knows Eternity past and eternity future as today. His, uh, his greatness when you understand and when you see yourself in contrast to that, automatically humility will, will just uh, come in you, into your life. You will not think too much about yourself or you will not have an inflated view about yourself because you see the greatness of God. And every breath which you use, take, the water which you drink, the food which you eat, the light which you enjoy, every single thing is been provided to you by this gracious God. And when you understand that, you would, uh, uh, it will force you or it will motivate you to depend upon him in a humble way. And we all are and all and uh, we learned that we need to remember always uh, that we are getting better than what we deserve. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what we read in Romans chapter 3. All human beings, there is no difference. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So if you are a sinner, sinner sin needs punishment. And God's word say that it is appointed unto man once to die and then to face judgment. The wages of sin is death. So in that situation, when all of us were deserving only death and hell, God through his eternal mercy, through his graciousness, he made his grace and his kindness appear in the Lord Jesus Christ and he allowed the Lord Jesus Christ to go to the cross of Calvary and die on your behalf. And by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, God is able to forgive you all your sins. Many a times you think about the cross and you see the love of God on the cross because love of God is telling, uh, I must save sinners. But the righteousness of God is telling, no, sin must be punished. The sinner should be punished. But I must save the sinner, love of God says. And God brought these two characters of his eternal love and his eternal righteousness to, to, uh, uh, to be merged at the cross of Calvary. 
Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary to purchase your salvation. He showed that God is righteous and the sin of the world was punished in the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. The love of God was poured out on each and every one of us because the, it is the love that prompted God to, to give a way out, of, way out of sin, way out of hell for the fallen humanity. And when a person experiences the salvation which is provided by the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever you are facing in this earth, how difficult it may be, you are always getting better than what you deserve. And when someone offends you or when someone insults you or when someone mistreats you, when someone is uh, uh, just neglecting you, just tell yourself, this is better than I deserve because I deserved hell. Number three, invite correction and rebuke. If you want to crucify your pride and if you want to grow in the grace of God and if you want to grow in humility, you must invite correction and rebuke in your life. Children, they don't like their parents to correct or rebuke them. Husband and or wife, they don't like the other person to confront them and correct them or rebuke them. And teachers, when they try to correct the uh, students, they don't like it because human beings, basically we are sinful and we don't like correction and uh, uh, rebuke. We would like to go our way. We would like to do it our way. But if you want to grow in humility, you invite correction and you, re, uh, you invite rebuke. And this is so important. One of the clearest indicators of a prideful heart is an unteachable spirit. An unteachable spirit, if you are having, you are very proud. And to crucify that pride and enable cultivation of humility to take place in deep down in your heart, you need to change that unteachable spirit. And you need to learn of God. You need to learn of God's word. An overinflated view about self. And that can receive any correction. And that can that can 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 receive correction without wearing the other person out first. Well, what do you mean? If somebody is trying to uh, correct uh, people, say, well, what do you mean? Are you sure I did that? How do you know that's how I meant it? Rather than foolishly despising reproof in that way, go out of your way to seek correction. You, you ask people, is there any way that I can improve? Is there any way that I, I need to change? Is there anything that I need to do so that I can improve myself? That is a heart of humility. In such a heart, the correction of other people, which is graciously allowed by God, will result in improvement in our life. Invite rebuke and seek correction. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1. Puts it as plainly as you will get it. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1 I am reading. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. But he who hates reproof is stupid. Stupid means you are a fool if you don't want anybody to correct you. If you, uh, if you are a fool, you will not uh, accept any rebuke. But I'll tell you, if you come to God's word, you read the Bible, you will understand there are so many areas in your life. There are so many attitudes. There are so many habits. There are so many things where you need correction. You need a rebuke. And that God's word can give. God's word is profitable in the sense it can correct you, it can guide you, it can teach you, it can, it can encourage you, it can, it can train you in righteousness. That is why we should pursue godliness by reading and meditating on God's word, the Bible. So we need to invite correction. We need to seek a, a rebuke. And don't be stupid by just despising anybody's correction. Invite the watchful, caring gaze of your brothers and sisters and your uh, father and mother and your teachers into your life. Just ask them, 
please see if you see something wrong in my life if i am heading on in in some wrong direction if i am speaking some ugly words if i my uh, uh, sight is not right if my looks are not right please tell me that is seeking correction and inviting rebuke that is a sign of humility and if you are able to do that i will tell you definitely god will make you grow in a gospel driven humility and if others have the courage to bring something to your attention don't demand mathematical precision in order to benefit from their correction even if they don't have 100% they don't have it 100% right even when what they are telling may not be right to the to the exact dot but think about it contemplate about it ask god whether it is right if it is right before god i'll tell you you need to accept that you need to humble before god and we don't want to win an argument when somebody is trying to correct us we need to we need to really uh, think about it and we should be humble enough to uh, allow those people to look into our life so that they will help us to take note of certain areas which are dark in our life and that will help us mortify pride in our life number 4 i told uh, i am talking about practical steps of how to crucify pride and how to grow and cultivate humility in your life study the character of god remember always you are getting better than what you deserve and invite correction and rebuke in your life four acknowledge dependence and transfer glory or else i will say acknowledge dependence and deflect glory at the beginning of every day if you are a humble person at the beginning of every day come to god in prayer come to god in dependence and acknowledge your dependence on him for your salvation and just for getting through and just for getting uh, you through the day it will be a humbling reminder that you can't even get through a day by yourself if you are willing to pray you are telling lord i need your help even today i need your help in my work i need your help in my studies i need your help in uh, good behavior i need help from you so that i will have a peaceful life i will have joy only when i depend upon you i will have a purpose in my life only when i depend upon you so that will that will uh, enable you to grow in your humility and then at the end of the day come to god in prayer and deflect all glory to him for any of the good things that has happened to you during that day any success which god gave you any accomplishment god gave you and when you do that your heart will not have a, a chance for being proud why you know that it is because of god's help that you achieved it it is because of uh, god's help that you succeeded it is because of god's help that this good thing happened in your life don't admire yourself for your uh, accomplishment systematically acknowledge that you have nothing and you haven't been given you don't have anything which is not been given unto you it is all god's gift and transfer all glory uh, of all good things to god i will tell you as human beings we and or our life our life is not fit to receive and accumulate glory only god is worthy to be glorified and he is a glorious god what is the difference between god and human being god is got the intrinsic glory that means you just may if you see god you will you will see the greatness and mag, ma, uh, magnanimity and the the glory of god and he will he will uh, 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 he will be so holy and you will just fall, would like to fall prostrate before him but for a human being i'll tell you it is all because of the the uh, the things what you add to your life which bring glory sometimes it may be your position 
sometimes it may be the money which you have or the the position or the post which you uh, acquired or uh, certain uh, things what you do uh, we do not have intrinsic glory you make two people a beggar and a king and uh, strip them of all the uh, 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 all the dress and put them in the same dress and make them stand next to each other you will not know who is the beggar and who is the king because there is no intrinsic glory in human being our account is not fit to hold glory we need to transfer glory for that we need to depend upon god so when you pray to god and depend upon him and when you are willing to deflect all glory or to or to god for all the success and accomplishment and and good things what has happened i will tell you you will be really blessed and you will grow in humility and finally number 5 and this is the most important one i am not telling that all other things are not important but the most important thing to grow in humility think much on the cross of christ meditate much on the cross of christ uh, contemplate the cross of christ survey the cross of christ by reading the uh, the bible by reading through the gospels by reading about the lord jesus christ and his sacrificial death on the cross of calvary when you cling to the cross of calvary when you abide uh, in in the uh, cross of calvary i'll tell you that cross of calvary is got some uh, amazing ways of humbling your heart and here i simply cannot improve upon the words of john stott a not a noted servant of god john stott he he uh, he told like this and i quote every time we look at the cross of jesus christ christ seems to be saying to us every time we look at the cross of christ Christ seems to be saying to us son daughter i am here because of you i am here because of you i am on this cross because of you it is your sin that i am bearing your curse that i am suffering your debt that i am paying your death i am dying what wonderful uh, thoughts john stott is telling Jesus Christ when you meet Jesus Christ hanging on the cross of Calvary when you meditate on that from the pages of the scripture Jesus Christ will tell you i am here because of you why because i am a sinner jesus christ ha- was hung on the cross of calvary it is your sin that i am bearing i am bearing your sin your curse that i am suffering my the suffering which i am suffering it is because of your curse all who sin they are cursed and that curse jesus christ bore and your debt i am paying you were an immense debt which you never could pay and i am paying that and your death i am dying and john stott says nothing in history or in the universe cuts us down to size like the cross of calvary your ego the inflated ego will be smashed when jesus say that to your heart whisper that to your heart your sin i am bearing your curse that i am suffering your debt i am paying your death i am dying and all of us have inflated view about ourselves whether you accept it or not we all have an inflated view about ourselves especially in our self righteousness especially in our achievements especially in our uh, our uh, abilities we have an inflated view about ourselves until we visit a place called calvary at the cross of calvary at the foot of the cross of calvary we shrink to our true size we shrink to our true size so dear beloved friend dear beloved viewer have you been cut down to size by this glorious gospel jesus christ took your sin he took your curse he died your death have you been cut down by this gospel if not i urge you 
I implore you to read the Bible and find out the truths about the Lord Jesus Christ, the uniqueness about the Lord Jesus Christ, how he was born into this world in a unique way, how he lived in this world in a unique way, how he worked miracles, how he healed the sick, how he, he bound the broken hearted, how he encouraged people, how the words of eternal life came out of his mouth. Have you ever meditated on the character of the Lord Jesus Christ? He is so unique in his life, in his birth, in his death, in his resurrection, in his ascension, in his return to this earth. In, in every area, you look at the Lord Jesus Christ and his teaching. It is so amazing and it is so unique. And he is there to meet with your heart and give you joy and peace forevermore. He is able to give you forgiveness of sin. He can bring you out of the guilt of sin. He, no sin is greater than what he can forgive. He can cleanse you. He can thoroughly purge your life and give you a new life. Jesus Christ can give you a new heart, a new spirit, a new direction, a new destiny and Jesus Christ is the living God. And he can meet with your living soul and he can impart knowledge which you have never had in this life. He can allow you to step into a different arena of life where you are so satisfied and content every day of your life. And have you been bowed in horror at the ugliness of your sin? Do you know that you are a sinner? I urge you, read the Bible. Bible will tell you your true color, your true selfishness, how sinful you are. The Bible will reveal it to your heart. Have you come to terms with the offense that your sin is to your creator? Do you know how much your sin is offending your creator who gave life? And have you cried out in repentance to the Lord? If you have done that, praise the Lord. But if you have not repented, the word of God is very clear. Jesus Christ commands every man everywhere to repent. Whether you are an Indian or an American, whether you uh, are a, a boy or a girl, whether you are an old man or a woman, whoever you uh, uh, may be. The word of God says, God commands everyone everywhere to repent and turn to him. God will have mercy if you have repented. And if you understand your wretched nature, I urge you and I beg you to survey afresh the wondrous cross of Calvary on which the Prince of Glory, Jesus Christ, died to see that your sin so heinous, your state is so hopeless that the only remedy was the brutal murder, the brutal substitutionary death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And confess your helplessness to God and I, I urge you to take a look at the claims of Christ. Take a look at the promises of Christ. You will find rest for your soul. And the wonder of wonder, Jesus Christ stands willing to receive you through repentance and faith in him. And for my brothers and sisters who have already been cut down to your true size by the gospel. Let the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ cut you down more and more and day by day, moment after moment, so that you will be marked by a gospel-driven humility. And when you are driven by humility, when, you, or when this gospel is driving you, I will tell you, you will have a blessed life for God's glory. And it's my prayer from the bottom of my heart that all of my viewers will consider the claims of Christ and, and uh, read the Bible for yourself to find the hidden treasures and find this great God, the living God, God of heaven and earth, God who is the creator, God who is the deliverer, God who is a willing savior, a seeking savior, is, is waiting to meet with your soul and bless your life for good and take you all the way to eternity. May the Lord bless you. Let us close with a word of prayer. Gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for these truths, these practical steps which we could derive from your word. Uh, the way how we can 
grow in humility how we can cultivate humility in our life how we can crucify pride in our life enable us to study your character enable us to remember and remind ourselves always that we are getting always better than what we deserve enable us to to cling to the cross of calvary where we will be cut down to true size where we will see the savior dying on our behalf and bearing our sin and and taking care of our curse dying our death Oh Lord, we thank you so much. And it's my prayer from the bottom of my heart that all the viewers will consider the claims of Christ and the claims of the Bible so that they will come in into the light of God's word and uh, understand and experience and, and uh, they will uh, receive the eternal truths which you have revealed to the humanity. We thank you and praise you in Jesus Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen.